is a walk-in freezer, so let's go take a look and see what's going on. They say it's up to 60 degrees. So we've got a few compressors back here. We got a fan here that literally you can reach right into and cut your arm off. But that pulls the heat out to this room and they box it in there. So the one we're working on is right here. And it's not running. The inside unit is completely quiet. No fan. And this unit out here is nothing going on. So we got power coming into it. No power to our contactor. It's working. We literally can put our meter up against that with the jaws open, and you actually will get amperage. It's measuring the flux lines of the solenoid. So you close it, and obviously it ain't gonna do much. But you open them up and put it right there at it, it literally can tell you that it's getting power. So you have a magnetic field. So with that being powered, we know that it should be going inside and coming back and then the pressure switch making. Alright, just put it in defrost. The heaters seem to be working. Look it out. No amper at all on the line going out. We do have power coming out of it. So, went ahead and broke some rules here. Made sure we had no resistance to ground. Went ahead and shoved my contactor in. That don't sound good. So I made sure I didn't have any shorts first, but we've got some issues there. We've got all, all legs coming in. Each one to ground is 120, 208 area between them. So if you gotta think about it, if the fans ain't running inside, it's because the delay thermostat's not coming on. So I don't bring on the, the fans until the box is cold. So if this ain't running, then it's not gonna get cold so the fans don't come on. So something's shutting this down. Even though, as far as I can see, our only safety control is this walk-in freezer.
Fisher. So we got us a big lake somewhere. Alright, so we went out and got the gauges. One thing you gotta keep in mind here, if we pressurize this, that switch is gonna make and she's gonna run with nitrogen in it. So we wanna make sure we turn this thing back off. Safer for us, safer for the equipment. So we're gonna pressurize this, see if we can see how fast it's dropping. Nothing hardly bad at all. Okay, see her a lot? Watch this. Maybe we can set it even lower. Here, we'll set it low. Keep my finger off of it. Watch this. I'm going to come down to here. We're about an eight. Up here, we're about a four. I can feel the leak right here. It must have cracked that. So that's where our leak's at. Here's a big tip for you new guys. When you're done with the tool, like I'm done with the stubby gauges, put them away. Because when you have a, a room like this with all this stuff in here, and it, you'll, you'll misplace things. So when I take things and I'm done with them, I'll either put them back in the bag or I'll put them in the walkway so I have to walk over them to leave so I don't lose them. Because that stuff gets expensive really quick. few filters here just don't always have every one of them I need but I do have the one I need today so 304 is the same one we had before luckily I keep some half inch three eighths and quarter inch here I looked high and low I don't know where in the heck I laid those at so I'm not gonna be able to tear it apart like I was hoping for but I went ahead and recut that so it's square on the end and uh, so we're just gonna have to put new nuts in it because I don't know where it went to. We'll just have to piece it in there and find our, our length that way because I was just gonna copy the uh, length of it. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that. With this type of flaring tool, you've gotta be flush with the top, whereas some of them you gotta overshoot it a little bit. This one's got a clutch on it, which right there it went. I like to make a couple extra rounds. That way it kind of smooths it out a little bit more just in case. It's not over tightening it, which is kind of nice. So we got that one done. I like this a lot better than my yellow jacket. I have the old fashioned original one from like 25 years ago. It works great for swedging and stuff like that, but you've seen me change as far as my swedging method. I use that spin swedge. Gives you a perfect bell. Here now I just gotta size it up to see where I gotta cut it at. Okay, so I got that marked. I always tend to blow through my dryers when they're gonna be thrown away. Obviously not before I put them in or something like that, only on old ones. I can barely blow through this. So this actually has got some major restrictions to it. At home, I went ahead and cut it apart. As you can see, there's a lot of crap there. And uh, right here, they end up putting a piece of this insulation. And that's what catches it from going on out through the canister there. But you can see there's a lot of garbage that this filter dryer has been catching over the years. Dropping pretty 
back and the field piece is sucking it out. So hopefully it won't be too long. We probably aren't going to get a perfect vacuum on this uh, just because of all the old uh, piping having leaks, stuff like that. But we're going to try to do it as best we can. That dryer being plugged up like that tells me they got either crap in the system or there's a lot of moisture at one time or the oil's dirty. Um, it's hard to say, but for right now we're uh, we're making good progress and uh, hopefully we'll be uh, recharging here in just a second. Okay, so we've got our about as good as we're going to get it. You figure there's always leaks around these king valves. So we're going to back seat these, which is going to isolate us from our uh, vacuum pump. And then uh, we'll hook our refrigerant gauges up, we'll bleed it, and get our recharge. Okay, so we've got us all uh, bled out up to the uh, king valves there. We're going to go ahead and dump some of this in our open one. That's just going to fill into that receiver first. Okay, so we're still in a negative here because of our solenoid being closed. Now we're not going to get too crazy here and flood our compressor out. But uh, the washer slowly go in to the point. This is going to take a while, so hold on a minute. Alright, so we're right about 13 pounds area. You can see why this thing broke. I mean, this thing's shaking like a bad girl in church. So, the way it's supported, you got a bracket kind of hanging there. If it came across any better, we'll take care of that in a little bit. But look at our head pressure. It's freaking high. So, you go around the back side of this box. out the condenser and you can't see crap through it so I'm gonna nail this thing with some nitrogen straight off the bottle I don't know if they got water here we're trying nitrogen first so I don't make a mess but yeah this is kind of a you can do this so in winter time you can weigh all the artificial head pressure up that way you can kind of control your head pressure in the winter time all right you stay here and we'll blow that out It's not even cold enough yet to get the fans to come on. It's starting to frost. Oh. So we've got a uh, heat exchanger right there. Subcooler, whatever you want to call it. Looks like we got a little oil on that. I don't have my usual Leatherman with me, so I gotta use this big honker. Oh, there we go. Came on right as I about put my blade in there. So good, now we got the fan running. They got most of the expensive stuff out. I don't remember, but I think the pressure's about the same. All right, so the more I get looking at this, that fan looks like it's been replaced. So I think that's why my head pressure's so high. We got a good two inches around the outside edge corner that basically is not covered like you would normally see. Equipment. 
start getting hot is what it is right now. Sometimes it's hard to keep a solid sight glass because you can't condense the liquid because the, the temperature is so hot. You run such high head pressure. So means the other ones are flushing. Means the other ones are flashing too. I may not be in a big hurry to try to fill that hole, especially with my pressure where they are. Now one of the problems I got too is that was the last of my refrigerant. That's gonna be about as much as I can get in. I wire tied that, got the vibration down. I'll need to get some uh, uni strut and some push clamps. I don't have the L channel. I don't have the L bracket that I need to do that. So when I come back, I'll just add that to it. The side glass is almost full. I'd say we're right in that ballpark. That puts us, uh, what's that? This says 24, so 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, about 30 pounds. I'd say it could probably hold about 31, 32, something like that. We're gonna put it into a pump down and see if, uh, if it takes it down okay. The coil's a little frosted in there because it took so long to get this thing charged. We'll see whether or not uh, we can melt that off before we go. Because they only have uh, two deep frost for 24. That's what our pressures do. Just when your journey is over, or at least you think, we have yet to pull down and shut off. And so I'm trying to figure out why. All right, so the fan shuts off and it melted the ice off and I can feel the heaters running. So basically just not pumping down. We're gonna try to uh, valve it off at the receiver and see if that pumps it down. If not, then we've probably got valve issues. So I crank it all the way in, hold the power, and she holds right there at about 11 pounds. She doesn't go right up. So our discharge valves are actually holding. So there's a chance that we might have some wrist pins that are acting up or the valves are shot. Either way, there's major issues with this thing. If you heard in the beginning, it made that rattle noise in the beginning. Now looking back, I should have probably knew something wasn't right, but I missed it, wasn't thinking. I'm gonna try to adjust this so that it doesn't stay in defrost any longer it needs to, just to get them by, and uh, see if we can adjust the pressure a little bit. But that's gonna wrap this one up. We're probably gonna, uh, we're gonna quote them a new compressor, and then uh, we should be able to just basically valve this thing off and yank it out, put a new one in. So that's gonna wrap this one up, guys. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click that notification bell. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.